Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Today we're going to be talking about red blood cell transfusion. Very commonly done for patients in which you want to raise the hematocrit uh, or with patients with anemia or any signs of acute bleeding. Let's talk about fresh whole blood. This is used for cardiac surgery or massive hemorrhage when more than 10 units of blood are required in a 24-hour period and it allows you to simultaneously give red blood cells plasma and fresh platelets. The packed red blood cells are um, generally the component most commonly used to raise the hematocrit. Okay? Each unit has a volume about 300 ml of which approximately 200 ml consists of red blood cells and one unit of packed red cells will usually raise the hematocrit by approximately 4%. The expected raise in hematocrit can be calculated using the formulas for the estimated red blood cell volume and the general rule here is that a 70 kg man will have a total blood volume of uh, 4900 ml and each unit of packed red blood cell will raise the hematocrit by 200 divided by 4900 or 4 percent okay so that's you know general rule what about um, leukocyte poor blood well patients with severe uh, leukocyte um, poor blood or leukoagglutinin reactions to packed RBCs can require uh, you know depletion of their white blood cells and uh, platelets. The white blood cells can be removed either by centrifugation or by washing. Let's talk about frozen packed red blood cells. Well here uh, they're occasionally needed for patients with severe leukoagglutinin reactions or anaphylactic reactions to plasma proteins and since the frozen blood has essentially all white blood cells and plasma components that are removed okay so the frozen packed red blood cells can be stored for three years um, and they're sparingly used um, but those are some of the key points that you want to keep in mind now what about the compatibility testing um, well before I look into that, one of the key things you want to remember is that patients scheduled for elective surgery can donate blood uh, for transfusion and the units can be stored for 35 days. And just It's a high yield fact. Now before transfusion, the recipient and the donor's blood are typed and crossed to avoid any kind of a hemolytic transfusion reaction. And although many antigen uh, system are present on RBCs, only ABO and RH systems are usually tested prior to the transfusion. The A and B antigens are most important and anyone who lacks uh, one or both has the IgM ISO antibodies right, against the missing antigen or the antigens in his or her plasma. The other important uh, antigen routinely tested for is the D antigen of the RH system. So those two if you want to remember are key points. Um, a recipient whose red cells lack D and who receives D positive blood may develop anti D antibodies that can cause severe lysis. Um, and another key fact is that in emergencies, type O negative blood can be given to any recipient, but only packed cells should be given to avoid transfusion of donor blood containing anti A or anti B antibodies. Now, what is a hemolytic transfusion reaction? Well, these are acute reactions uh, related to the transfusions, usually because of mismatch in the ABO and the isoglutinin-mediated mechanisms. Most are due to clerical errors, and the current compatibility testing um, and double-check clerical systems result in reduced amounts of hemolytic transfusion reactions. There's also delayed uh, hemolytic transfusion reactions caused by minor red blood cell antigen discrepancies. And again, the hemolysis usually takes place at a slower rate and is mediated by IgG alloantibodies causing extravascular red blood cell dis destruction. The most common antigens involved in such reactions are the Duffy, Kid, Kel, and C and E loci of the RH system. The current risk of a delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction is 1 in 6,000. And the signs include chills and fevers, backache and headache, um, dyspnea, hypotension, or a cardiovascular collapse. Immediately stop the transfusions 
um, to prevent you know acute DIC or kidney failure and um, these signs are very important to know the lab findings uh, that you have in this case um, would include things like you know checking the product bag for any sort of a clerical error um, the transfusion product bag with its pilot test tube must be returned to the blood bank and a fresh sample of the recipient's blood must accompany the bag uh, for retyping and recrossing um, also the hematocrit will fail to rise by the expected amount and coagulation studies will reveal evidence of uh, AKI or DIC in cases of delayed hema hemolytic reactions the hematocrit will fall and the indirect bilirubin will rise and that's a key sign for treatment if it's an acute uh, transfusion hemolytic reaction uh, you should stop the transfusion and vigorously hydrate the patient to prevent uh, ATN and forced diuresis with mannitol is also helpful for preventing um, excessive kidney damage what about leukoagglutinin reactions well most transfusion reactions are not hemolytic but um, they represent reactions to the antigens um, and understand that transfusion products relatively rich in leukocyte rich plasma especially platelets are most likely to cause this so the key thing you want to remember is that most commonly patients will develop fever and chills within 12 hours after the transfusion so it's not like instantly but it's 12 hours after and in severe cases cough and dyspnea may occur and the chest radiograph may show transient pulmonary infiltrates and because no hemolysis is involved, the hematocrit will rise by the expected amount despite the reaction. So this is markedly different from the um, acute hemolytic reaction. They respond to acetaminophen and dihydramine and corticosteroids. The other thing you want to remember is that um, patients should receive leukopore or wash blood products if needed. Also, hypersensitivity reactions are common. Um, sometimes urticaria or bronchospasm can develop, and these reactions are almost always due to the exposure to the um, allogenic plasma proteins rather than the leukocytes. So there's a low risk, um, but it's enough um, for you know routine use of antihistamine premedications, uh, which have been stopped, you know, before packed red blood cell transfusions are given so that's something that we have put in place to prevent this you can also have an anaphylactic shock um, patients may develop uh, IgA deficiency or patients with IgA deficiency are more likely to see these reactions and patients require transfusion of washed or even frozen red blood cells to avoid severe reactions